Hello, Susan. Good evening, good morning, or good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this broadcast. I'm Thomas Fessler, my friends, and this is Disclosure Tonight. Happy frickin' month, well, Tuesday, it's that day of the week, down to the hour, minute, and second, that we come together as a community to go ahead and take everything we know, put it in a box, and put it on the shelf, and act like it doesn't exist. As we come to talk about those things, the government won't. To talk about those things from science fiction. To talk about those things from the X-Files, and more importantly, those things are UFOs that you can walk out of your house more nights a week than you would think and see them out there. Yes, it's not as easy to see that as what I'm saying, but the truth of the matter is they've been out there. They've been out there for tens of thousands of years. While the government wants to keep on changing the name, so you know, unidentified anomalous phenomena or whatever the hell they're going to put it, the truth of the matter is the government has been going with their military program, covering up a war against the phenomena that as they try to go ahead and pry the technology out of their freaking dying hands. How do we know that? It's all there. It's all military. It's all war. We're not seeing anything from science. We're not seeing anything from humanity. We're hearing about the atrocities that they've committed against the phenomena. Why? To get the technology for their war machine. Whether that's going ahead and blowing up, you know, if you want to call it countries around the world, or using it against the people. You never know what this government is up to. Yes, we've got some congressional investigations coming in addition to what's going on with NDAA and IAA. In fact, the problem is, where the fuck is that UFO report? Because you know what? It's not here. These bozos aren't bringing it out. Avril Haines, where the hell is it, Avril? You know, we're just expecting that it's not going to be here on a regular basis on Disclosure Tonight. Good evening, everybody. How you doing, Gary, my friend? Long time no see. Hello. 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 Good seeing you. I need to go ahead and preview this camera. I always forget to do it. Too many things to get going in the day. On that note, let's go ahead and see who the heck we have out there in the audience today. Oh, John Dillinger. Missed some things at the start, but welcome, John. Great seeing you here. <laughs> Greg O'Brien, who is this ass clown? Don't you see why they keep on switching characters on us? Well, this hat <laughs> used to be our DOD Inspector General, going back a couple of years. And as we got about 88 of pages of documents to peruse through, we're not going to go through and read every one. I want you to see what's going on from this guy's perspective. Because if we think that no one's paying attention, there's no one behind the wheel, that everyone's ignoring what's being said about the phenomena. You're going to find out it is far from the case. And that's what I, you know, take something that's a negative, let's find a way to turn it into positive. Jonathan Mann, you know, when they talk about little green man, the only thing is they're not green. Well, if we do have reptilians, they could be green, but little green men, we're talking about little short grays. Yeah, perfect height though. Can I balance a drink on their head? <laughs> it's, no, it's not a flathead. Uh, either way. Oh, my. Where have I gone? Let's bring out the chickens. Let them run around for a while. I'll just take this one sound effect. Turn it down. Yeah. Got to deal with it. We, hey, someone new to the chat. Four up. The Kippen Alien is real. I've never heard of the Kippen alien, but sounds interesting. Susan goes time traveling Asians. I love the smell of UAP or UFO and UAP FOIA releases in the morning. Smells like victory. Someday this war is gonna end. Oh, we're not even getting started yet. I don't even think, I mean, maybe there have been some shots fired. I think it's more diplomacy yet at this point. Would you look at that? Yellow Tommy Tanker, also known as Andy. Hi, all. Maintenance done on the house earlier today, so I'm back as well as long as I can stay awake. Hopefully, you're still awake, Andy. Great having you around today. Yeah, I had to go ahead and climb up a ladder yesterday, and 
clean out the gutters as they were getting ready to overflow again. It's amazing. Amazing how I am the only one who can ever catch Holy shit. that the gutters are overflowing, even though it's right outside of someone's office and they can hear it. It would mean they would have to go take care of it. Oh, yeah. Housework, as Gary would say, hire a man. But I guess that's what I am, so I'll have to hire myself. <laughs> Kelly Brout, hi, everyone. Got here early, no traffic, great parking spot. You're in the front row. Thanks for coming in. And, and tell you what, if anyone wants to get Kelly's autograph, please, after the show, line up to the back left side of the studio, the back left side of the studio. Thanks for coming in tonight. Would you look at that? David Dominic. Hello, everyone from Oklahoma. Welcome. Thanks for coming in, Dominic. It's something from Chicago or Chicago or New York with a name like Dominic, but uh, maybe not. Either way, Dominic's are all across states actually you know what back in the midwest i actually had a local grocery store run by the mob called dominic's yep. <laughs> lm hello everyone david dominic the first ufo i ever saw was in oklahoma going all the way back to 1990 someone turned the furnace up hold on it's that time of the night It's that time of the night again where I need to go ahead and close the heater vents so I don't burn up. How I keep on going out one side, coming out the other, well, that's what I call talent. Hopefully it's a little bit quieter. You never know where it's going to go. Jake, not from State Farm. Hello, DT family. Happy Taco Tuesday. You better believe it. Tequila Tuesday for some, not today. No. Nope. Kelly Broats there. Uh, who else do we have out there in the audience? I said hello to LM already. No, I did not. LM. Hey, Kelly. Oh, yes, I did. You get up, what, run around the room, and you forgot what is where. Electra RC, also known as Zach. I think you were here earlier in the chat. You're not well today, so I'll put the, put it on the TV when it starts. Not in the chat once it starts. Hope you're feeling better, Electra RC. Let's think some positive thoughts and build them and then launch them up to Zach. Hope that helps. There's that building you have to do before you launch. Whether it's positive or negative. Remember. It's always a cost. <laughs> Syrup. Yes, I prefer... Actually, Mrs. Butterworth's actually is unhealthier, but it tastes better than true maple syrup. Well, maybe, but yeah. Let's get to that another time. Cable guy is in the audience. Uh, who else do we have out there? Peggy and Steve, would you look at that? Hey, Google, what's the temperature in Miami? In Miami, it's currently 69 oh. degrees. 69, dude. Sounds nice. It's nice and clear by you. High of 79 tomorrow. 0% chance of rain. Sounds like a great place to live this time of year. Thanks for coming in, you two. Uh, who else do we have out in the audience? Let's zoom up a little bit higher. Pam Harris, the DOD, has an inspector general. Yes, they've got many, and they think they just got another new one. Does he actually do his job, or is he one of those saying... Quote, everything is under our control and above board in a press release. He may have said that, uh, but inspector generals are generally the ones saying, mm-hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. and they're not going to admit to anything, potentially. They're going to listen in as much as they can, and they're not going to tell you as much as, the, as you need to know, because they're there to listen, not to tell you what you want to hear. Super unknown. Hello, everyone. Have a great show, Thomas. Thank you very much. W. Decker, all the way down from Texas. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for being around as much as you are. Anonymous Rex, good to see you, buddy. One of those days, huh? <laughs> Jimmy Jennings has made it. Yeah. There's a great picture I have like that of Tim, actually. Let's see if I can find that. Am I going to do that? Am I actually going to do that? Yes. Oh, I don't know if I could show it or not, but let's see if I can. Uh, let's go to me. And let's send myself a message. Now well, we're almost there. Give me a second, folks. I'll get there. Oh, just so you know, that's the wrong person. I want to, no, no, not that one. 
I don't want to create a new one. I'm looking for Tim. I know Tim's in here somewhere. Ah, there's Tim. What Tim am I talking about? Timid Tim. No? Ah, oh, there he is. Close. Close. There we go. Focus in. He's got a green shirt on. <laughs> now you know where it's from. Bill H., although it may not be Tim. Bill H., welcome. My man from Discord, good seeing you around today. I heard you've had some cool movies I've been sharing with the people out there. It, great community. Glad I'm sorry. Not glad. Sorry. I don't, yeah, I don't get around that often. You know, you work a full-time job, then you do a show, then you put everything else, and it's like you're burned out. Sometimes you need to recharge. Right, Cupcake? Better believe it. Uh, Owen from Ohio. Ohio. Welcome, Owen. Good to see you. Shelly Montgomery. Thanks for stopping in last night. Who else do we have out there in the audience? Royal Morning Blue. London calling Royal Morning Blue. Gary, correct me. What do they say in uh, when they're London? Uh, hmm? No, when they're actually going in LO, LO, when they're calling London. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. This is Nighthawk. Come in London. Was that right? Yeah. Thank you for coming in, Royal Morning Blue. Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm not sure if everybody heard, but uh, didn't realize it last year, but the person who played Tis I, Leclerc, pa unfortunately passed away last year. Yeah. He was an asset to that show. Hilarious. <laughs> Jimmy Jennings. Uh, hope this guy knows what happened to the report. Well, someone else should ask him and say, hey, IG, where's the report? But then again, I, is the ODNI actually from the DOD? She's kind of separate, I think. She's executive branch. That's the problem. We're dealing with a presidential faux pas. Well, Pam Harris, I forgot my manners. Thanks for coming in today. Eli McGinnis, do me a favor, my friend. Pop one and pour one for the audience. It's on me. Oh, as remember, do stream, do not stream, well, and drive. <laughs> uh, Thor, where am I? Well, you know where we're at. Yeah, I was a couple minutes late again. And I was taking Cuppy out this morning and uh, took a, well, trying to get her to go out and go pee after she's been running around and she's a bit tired and I thought she'd go and nope. Jenny Jennings, me forgot my manners. Also, hello to everyone. Good seeing you there. Who else do we have out there? As we're getting hopefully near the bottom of this list, Midwest, Midwest Night Watchers. I need to slow down and freaking just read and enjoy. Good to see you. Hi, everyone. Hi back at you. Who else do we have out in the audience? Digger Dog. How are those bodies doing today? <laughs> What's the count for the week? One, two, three. This morning. <laughs> Uh, I gotta have fun with it. Gotta have fun with it. My God, it's tight. Life is too short to be freaking bitter and angry. I'd rather laugh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what am I laughing at? We'll learn. Uh, Daryl Zernick, Mr. Live Long and Prosper. Thanks for coming in. Esmeralda, thank you for being around. As I realize, I am sitting wrong. Hmm. Give me a second. I'm getting a spasm going in my neck. I have not been sitting with proper posture, but leaning forward, and uh, my body just loves it. Ben Fox, thanks for coming in, my friend. Tommy Carter, hello, hello. Excuse me, Mr. Carter, are you free? <laughs> Gary, are you free? <laughs> well, we better say hi to Heidi. She's here. Hi. Heidi ho. <laughs> not, <laughs> Heidi hi. Not not a ho, but it's a song. Ben Fo Save me, Gary. Ben Fox is around. Mike T. Happy Wednesday Eve for some people. Well, what time is it there, Gary? So it's already Wednesday. Good morning, Wednesday to you. Okay. Rats. 
Rats, rats, rats. Paradigm, oh, Paradigm Theories is here as well as Esmeralda, the ladies, and Tracy Scott, everybody, the ladies of... Yeah, and it'll be hot tamale. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's going to be 70 degrees or 79 something in freaking Florida tomorrow. That's going to be wonderful. Joseph Sarek, use a greeting from New Jersey. Good to see you. Ben Fox is in the audience. Michael Padalia. Good to see you, Michael. Uh, who else do we have out there? Esmeralda, I think we already said hello. Is, am, am I getting near the bottom? I'm trying to scroll through this as fast as I can. I'm just about getting there. Nathan Forrest has made it in. Cable Guy is also here. Cable Guy. You know, did you ever work with Gary Voorhees before? I heard he was a cable installer before UAPX on the rise. Oh, fuck. Now they can hear you, son of a bitch. Yeah, I got a message coming through on the Disclosure Hunts hotline to tell me. Oh, uh, well, yeah, they I got. Wasn't audible. Oh, hold on, I need to go to I need to go to your advanced audio properties, and I need to take Gary and now monitor off. I had you it set up. Some amazing puns. Oh yeah, he's been a freaking a barrel of monkeys talking about yeah. everything, and I just screw the pooch. Well, not really. Again, Xavier Gamer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Hi all. Yes, Paradigm Theory is absolutely. We'll get there. Let me scroll through this really quick so I can stop screwing up. Just Phil. Evening, everyone. Just Thomas and Gary. Good to have that around. I guess I could uh, turn my name on. People can see it. Alex Seekins. What's up, y'all? Good to see you, Alex. David Wartsky coming in at the last minute. Uh, as we're coming down to the end of welcoming our, everybody in. Yes. <laughs> it's that kind of a show again, everybody, as we're getting through it. I think we've got about everybody. Tom is, Tommy Misses has just came in. Uh, one from Ohio, W. Decker, I Tommy think. Misses. Paradigm Theories, Kelly Burrow. No, we got all, We got everybody. Paradigm. Kelly. And that. We is. need the close-up on Kelly's eye. Oh, Kelly bro, Kelly's piercing blue eyes, as they usually call out. Yeah, never piss off. Never piss off a strawberry blonde. Girl. Ginger Mae Martin. I worked for her before. That was Thomas's name at school. <laughs> You're not supposed to let people know about it. No. Oh, my God. Trammell Crow Company back in the day, Midwest. She was the head of IT and how's her PC specialist? Holy cow. Um, you may have also missed some super chats, apparently. I did. I was scrolling through, I didn't miss anything, did I? We, holy shit. Where did they all holy come? Shit. I didn't even, you know, up, uh, there's something wrong that with my came chat. Through on the, that came through on the disclosure. Huh? Yeah, uh, the, yeah, I know, but there's something wrong with my freaking chat here because none of, well, yeah, they did show, but they're not showing in the other place. So, son of a gun. Oh, oh my God. Let's start this out right. W. Decker starting off the Super Chats tonight. Yes. Here's a donation <laughs> helped buy a new toner cartridge for Avril's printer so she can finally print that report for us. Royal Morning Blue, <laughs> he did do London Calling. I was on key for London that. Calling. Uranium London. is not hand luggage. Yes, I would think so. Pam Harris, would you look at that? Ten bucks. Holy shit. Thomas is having, keeps on. Anyway, this is London Calling. We're going to defeat the Jerry's whatnot. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> keep calm and carry on, everybody. Yes, let's bring out the B, shall we? B, a ten of Thomas. Be yes, man. would you look at ten that? Thomas man. having a great show. Keep ten up be man. the good work. Joseph Syracuse, a four out of five alien surveyed, said they prefer humans to on dry toast. Yeah, they prefer their humans with dry toast. We prefer their humans on dry toast. Yes, four out of five. I've actually upped that to nine out of ten. <laughs> because we have had admissions from multiple people that, yes, we're not the top of the food chain. And our little gray brother, whoever it is, possibly is. Would you look at that? What the hell's going on? I need to get into here really quick. Let me find myself. I need to go to the beauty school. I'm bored. What are we doing? What's everyone doing today? What am I doing? I am. Oh, wow. It's already on. This is, uh, okay. Turn it down just a little bit. Take a little bit more red out of my face. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I look a little bit pale because, That's yeah. Propped on the screen. It's the meds. It's the meds. They have wonderful effects. And Cupcake, come here, girl. Where are you at? Cupcake. 
Cupcake the Wonder Dog is with us tonight. She is behind me, walking back and forth, just pacing. You ready for the show, girl? Ready to do some good stuff? All right, let's get this thing started. All right, put her down on the pillow. Right I don't think she's bothered. To right next to my desk. Yes. Sometimes she has that staring look of just kind of looking out there, but most of the yeah, time. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> From who? That's my normal look. Oh. No. <laughs> Yeah, it's like one of those things, like whenever I'm going to talk to the audience, I'm going to start looking off to the side and not looking at the camera and just kind of... Yeah, you should never look at the camera. It's a TV trick. You never look at the camera because it makes people feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. like you, you know what I mean. Uncomfortable. Well, let's make them feel comfortable then, shall we? <laughs> Clear go, overlay, push definitely. that down. Do what you've got to let's do. get on to this, shall we? All right, so the main topic for tonight we're talking about is the DOD Inspector General. Back from a couple years ago, let's see if I can find this wonderful PDF that I worked on. Yeah, they released a PDF that was over 400 pages of content. 400 pages of content, yes. But the thing that's interesting about that content is uh, it included NDAA 2021 uh, for 2020 for fiscal year 2022, and it also included the IAA for 2022. So you take all those out and that 400 and some odd pages pops down to around 80. Now that you, you take out a couple more, you know, we're down, I think, how many am I down to now? All right, we're at 96 pages, but there's a lot of crap in here and everything. But we're going to have a fun time checking this whole document out. Let me go ahead and bring that up on the big board for us all to take a look at. And the biggest thing which I want you to see, and as we go through this, the interesting part of it is, majority of the document is showing how much what's being said in the media and other places is uh, converted to text and distributed throughout the DOD. Now we're gonna have to, we have to ask the question, oh, they weren't aware, anyone in the DOD that is, that there was a UFO report, or that the UFO report was due on this date. Well, according to this, every single, you know, there is a high level of attention to detail of what's being set out there in the press. So if the deadline came and went on the internal, which we know, it didn't. They knew what the deadline was. They know what they're doing about keeping it out of the press and not releasing it. I can't wait to see the FOIA emails coming from Avril Haines going and giving us some of the insights. Well, they may say it's a matter of national security. Well, it's a matter of national job security, if you ask me. And I hope Congress gets to the bottom of this bullshit because we have the executive branch of the United States, as we didn't ex expect it, giving the American people the bird. You don't need a UFO report. We have all these other things going on. It doesn't fit our agenda of what our executive branch wants to talk about. It could go ahead and complicate things. Well, shouldn't have signed the law in the first place. Now, should you? And if your people aren't going to go ahead and release it, at least have the common decency to go out there and... uh Tell us and explain why and help us get to that point. Lead us, whatever you have to do to get there. But there's not been one attempt by, in a daily press, you know, they need to start asking these questions in the daily press conference. Oh, God, we need to get ahead of the, uh, is it Peter Ducey at Fox News? We need to get Peter Ducey to start asking about where the heck is the missing UFO report and maybe some other reporters in the daily news conferences. While we could go ahead and have this at a DOD conference, they're not saying shit. Truth of the matter is Avril Haines is on the from the executive branch of government. She's not part of the DOD. She's part of the executive branch. Well, yes, they are kind of, full, uh, you know, they kind of they are in the DOD, but you know what? They're appointed by good old Joe. And they're run by Joe's office. And they follow what Joe's office wants them to do above and beyond anything so uh maybe we need to look at that angle beyond just the usual dod press briefings what haven't gone anywhere we need to get someone on that white house press committee some cojones steel cojones 
Ah, those giant balls from the aliens. <laughs> that would be a mess. <laughs> oh my God, there's a... Tw oh, I can't show that. I can't show that. <laughs> they may have to find another way. A plug. A plug-in version of those balls. You never know. Let me... uh get to the zoom here shall we well we're gonna go ahead and take a look oh, would you look at that it came up so nice and easy did that actually happen here well yes it did let me just move over to this oh there we go one little bit it's off just by a titch would you look at that so coming to us believe it or not from mr john greenwald at the black vault Inc. sent to him response to freedom of information act request for all emails Including, aha, uh, let's see if I can get into here. Let's just do it this way and make it easier. That, and I want yellow. This responds to your Freedom of Information Act and request for you fucked with your all emails, including all attachments sent to and from BC or BCC or CC to Acting Inspector General Sean O'Donnell, which contain the keywords for unidentified aerial phenomena or and or unidentified aerial phenomenon or blah 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 uap uaptf or ufo or unidentified flying object and or aoi msg holy shit let's get that to there from april 6 2020 through the date of this processing this request we received your email your request on january 4th 2022 so this request goes all the way back to january so if you put in a request now Holy shit. January 4th, 2022. Talk about speedy and ex expeditious. All right, I'm bringing myself up a little bit. Speedy and expeditious. It's been a year and six days for this FOIA to come through. So if there's anything you want to get, it's going to take some time. And Gary, if there's anything you need to tell me from Disclosure Hungs, let me know. <laughs> I can't watch right now. By email okay. data on that. So as we get into this, the mission support team conducted a search and located records responsive to your request. Below are your 406 pages of data, uh, which pertain to interagency communications protected by deliberative process privilege. Matter of privilege. The purpose for withholding such recommendations is to encourage the free and candid exchange of opinions, blah, 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 bullshit, bullshit. Let's just get down into it. There is some information what they're going to take and they're going to show us. Let's get into the nitty gritty for this. So the first thing we're going to be coming up to is a general email talk from April 26th meeting. The date is April, Friday, April 3rd, 2021. Just going to come in and it's just going to be an, a weekly meeting. What's in it? Well, as of April 6, 2021, remember, this is before the first UAP report that we had. Coming from him is on, on his matters for discussion is UAP rollout confirmation. Now, this is a OLAC meeting with the IG. Let me dig that up. Uh, OLAC. OLAC hmm. not a lot of stuff for quote OLAC it's not the Ohio leadership <laughs> let's say DOD Oh, forget that one. What does OLAC stand for? Open Learning Access and nah, nah. Anyway, there's a meeting with the uh, acting IG coming for in April 26, 2021. Coming to this as their next one, looking at uh, the next meeting coming up on April 30th, 2021 again. And highlight that. And we've got top item for discussion. Unidentified aerial phenomena, May 3 and May 4th, rollout confirmation. Remember, this came before the June 2020, uh, the June 24th 
rollout of information. Apparently, there's something that they were getting ready to roll out before it, maybe to start talking about it. Or, as usual, the government pushed it back because they're going to push it back to the last possible date and give us the least amount of information possible. Going into the next meeting we've got is May 4th, 2021. We're going to get into UAP, Hill and Media Response. They're getting into, what are we talking about here? Uh, we've got, good afternoon, FYSA, for your something, something, <laughs> for your specific attention. Below is a uh, political pro article on the announced UAP evaluation. Pentagon Watchdog opens new probe into military's handling of UFOs by Brian Bender. From there, it goes down into and gives a full rendition of the overall story. And they were talking about uh, the probe uh, comes as Congress. You know, they're basically talking about the IGs has launched an evaluation into the actions the military has taken to address the spate of UFO sightings in recent years. So he's keeping an eye of what particularly is going on with respect to himself and the upcoming report. Remember, the Inspector General is the one who's going to have to go and track down all the fraud. Not the frog, the fraud. <coughs> maybe we'll find it, maybe we won't, but uh, let's move on some more. So as we get um, coming a little bit further, coming down into it, we're down to now May 7th uh, of 2021, Talking about the UAP, uh, SASC, and SSCI. To, to, uh, uh, is this a special access? SS. I am bad with uh, SSCI. What the hell is an SSCI? <laughs> I've got some requests here. Oh. Uh, what is a SSCI request? Uh, let's see if it's here. No, it's another SSCI report. <laughs> SSCI is Senate Select Committee for Intelligence. Uh, I'll go to here. SASC. Is the Senate Arms Committee, sorry, Senate Arms Services Committee. So we're talking about Senate request for a briefing coming into the DOD with regards to UAP. Uh, again, May 17th, talking about the 60 Minutes article. We all remember that, actually, not the article, the 60 Minutes piece where we had Fravor, we had Lou, we had uh, Ryan Graves, a bunch of people going and talking about that. Well, here we go. They've got a full breakdown of the entire piece word by word of everything that was said no editorial just giving them a literal breakdown of the overall part of the conversation what's interested is we're not seeing anything going back out it seems like there's a lot of for your information coverage on this very interesting to say the least and i know i lost the chat again because it's not moving on that board is it yep it's stuck Sorry about that, chat. If I have not been paying attention to anybody, is there anything that I missed there? Oh, let's take a look here. Uh, Renee Cruz is here. Welcome, Renee Cruz. Yes, that's a good reminder. If I can find you here, Renee. I know you're here somewhere. Well, I lost that. Renee says, please kindly, uh, gently and kindly press the share, like, and subscri subscribe buttons. Yeah, what the heck am I waiting for? If you're having a good time, do us a favor. Give us a thumbs up. And if you're not enjoying this broadcast, give us a thumbs down. More importantly, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. Go ahead and you know hit that subscribe button. If you could share out a link to this broadcast with your friends and other people who might be interested in hearing how the government lies to us and keeps all the information away, please Share the show on your social media accounts. We really, I really appreciate that. We're trying to hit 5,000 subs if we can do it. A slow climb, but uh, I'd rather have a slow and steady uh, climb versus a lot of the other channels out there who seem to buy subs on a daily basis. Yeah. You just have to go to the go out there and look, and you'd be amazed how out of nowhere someone just gets hundreds of subs a day and everything, and then it's blank for so many days. Usually there's a pattern going on where you'll see a regular pulse happening. Yeah. Don't 
Keep going on that one. Okay, uh, past this, let's take this down a little bit of a notch. Again, talking about uh, Pentagon's office, ta- another article from Politico, Brian Bender, talking about a day after Lou Elizondo filed his complaint for the agency, Inspector General announces a probe in the Pentagon actions. Let's see if I can make that a little bit easier to see. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can. There we go. Bring that to there. Ah, there we go. That's as big as it's going to go. Perfect. Yes, talking about that article where, you know, um, again, Lou Elizondo, IG, there's an article about it. They're going to hear about it. I wonder how much they do that with the live streams as well, if they watch that much. (laughs) View the article, you know. uh, All right. What is our next piece we're going thrown in here? Oh, wow. They're still using Blackberries. (laughs) I thought you'd be interested in the breaking New York Times article below on UAPs. According to the article, intelligent officials are reporting that they found no evidence that aerial phenomena seen by Navy pilots are alien spacecraft. So even when, well, they can see that the negative press being put out, driven by the misinformation and disinformation, head up by our wonderful DOD. You just have to say, why the heck are they doing this kind of stuff? Uh, can't say. We will figure out in the end. we got a question coming in. Remember, if you have a question, try and get it up there in all caps. If you can, make it a little bit easier for me to go ahead and see. I think Tracy Scott has got a question. Thomas, yesterday you mentioned Green Street doing a uh, the Green Street, Street dong, a deep dive, in, uh, doing a deep dive into Bob Lazar. Is this because he's going to give evidence to Congress? Uh, as he also said, as he also signed NDAs. I don't know if Lazar <laughs> can't see me. I can't say if Lazar <laughs> actually did or did not sign NDAs. Honestly, by the way, how Lazar has talked about a lot of stuff. Uh, and it truly was a, a dark site for what it was being described. And he talked about things that were a matter of national security. If he, check all those boxes off, and he was in that point. You just have to look at it and say, he'd be in prison right now. He'd be married to someone named Bubba. Well, he probably by this time would have had freaking at least six kids. (laughs) Gotta have some fun with that. What else do we have out there for questions? I think that's all. Keep, Keep this moving, yes. Only could 60 Minutes could give us update. Yeah, 60 Minutes was a great piece. I have to say that. Yes, I agree with you that much. And where the hell is Richard Simmons? He's at his place and he's been hiding. He's, he's got health issues. He doesn't want people to see him going through his bad times. Shh, we've already seen them. <laughs> Let's move on. Again, New York Times article going ahead. Uh, this was from June 3rd, 2021. Remember, the New York Times has had a specker, a speckled, a peckered past <laughs> with regards to being a dick a lot of times with regards to phenomena. There's some stuff that serves as positive, but ma- majority of a lot of it is coming up negative whenever it possibly can be. Again, we, you know, as part of this church committee that we talked about, as they uh, explore the FBI and the CIA and their payola that they begin to be giving the media and social media. It's not just going to be for, well, what was going on in the last couple of years. I tell you, there's, there's going to be a lot more because that's where they practice all this stuff was with our stuff. Coming to the next one. Yes, government finds no evidence. Same dang article. Let's get through this, shall we? Coming to the next piece. Attaches your June newsletter for your review. Where are we at? And with UAP, this is uh, June 4th, 2021. Uh, this is coming from the Office of Legislative Affairs Council, Affairs and Communications, DOD, going to the DOD Office of Inspector General, uh, everyone's email addresses down there and say, okay, apologies for the delay, blank is out for today, I'm covering for communications, where is the UFO stuff, nothing here, nothing here, oh yeah, this is where they had some attachments coming in, in the June newsletter, this is probably where they're going to have it. 
Oh, let's take where we're at next. Memorandum, cybersecurity, fuel, non-fuel, European command. Oh, I don't want to do that. I'll screw this up. Uh, audit of the department, compliance, evaluation of Air Force steering, evaluation of DOD's handling of sexual assault against... Oh, could this be about Gary, uh, Gary Reed? Maybe I'll have to move that over a little bit so you can see a little bit better this time. Quality control, form of, yeah, it's just a bunch of bullshit articles covering on stuff. Again, there's not a lot here for what we're seeing. Um, come down to the next one. They just included the entire freaking newsletter. Let's move on. Coming down to... Um, this one is coming in. Really? You're going to do that to me, huh? Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, that's good enough. This one is coming in talking about Rep Representative Andre Carson, who was on Face the Nation. We've got that article here, I think, up on, on the channel. This was where Andre Carson, he was the first person who wanted to come out and demanding hearings, which he was the chair of that hearing. Remember, the, uh, this was on July 4th, 2021, after the UAP report came out. But once we went and hit that situation and got past it, we can go ahead and see that. Okay, so this is July 6th, 2021. Wasn't our hearing back in June, I believe? And if that's the case, it took him about a year. God, it's anything you want to get done in government, it seems. You want to have hearings on this subject? It took them a year to get there. A year. Now, remember, if that's the case, they had a year from Congress's side to prepare for it. But the DOD was aware that they're going to be coming asking questions. So why were they acting like, we don't know, we, we don't know shit? You know, it's, it's kind of sad to say the least. Let's go ahead. Uh... Let's move on for our next one. Where else are we at? Getting into good afternoon. The Senate Select Committee on Intelligence has reported on Intelligence Authorization Act for FY22. Uh, oh, yeah. This is when they went and actually included the Intelligence Authorization Act for FY22. Remember all that to talk about everything that was going to be required within this document. We don't need to go through that document again. We already know why. Again, here is NDAA for 2022. Coming back to the IG, August 9th. Again, that's almost, that was over a year from where the UFO report was going to be due. They've known about it. It's within their knowledge base. So to have the freaking game that they're, they're playing right now just does not make sense i need to go and find an application here that's screwing some stuff in the background give me a second here folks i keep on seeing a hiccup going every couple seconds and i just want to shut down some tools in the background that i'm not using right now that may be causing that hiccup uh let's get to there that can stay that can stay that can stay okay and i can get rid of that one let's move it along all right let's move on are you got you know are you seeing this everybody the documents are there they're out in plain sight. It's one of those things you have to go ahead and take a look at and understand. There is full coverage of the Pentagon, of what's happening on the outside. As we're looking in, they're getting that covered in their emails. I hope Avril Haynes gets turned on to some of our podcasts. Yes, we're small, but we're loud, and we are proud. Let's move on. All right, oh God, as we look into some... Let's see if I can get into this. We've got some spreadsheets here, literally, that are going through it. Um, I need to go from here. That one, 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 that one. I want to go ahead and go through these docs right here. So this is page or 38 through 61, and I want to find UFO. Eight matches were on. It's not letting me know what freaking page I'm on. Oh, wonderful. Here we go. Page 15, page 78. Now, let's look for UAP. 
page 15, 2078, no. Uh, unidentified, page 32, well, that's the one we saw a little bit ago. Here we go. There we go. Evaluation of Department of Defense's actions regarding unidentified aerial phenomena. I wish we could find the document on that one. That would be a good one. Now, in that long spreadsheet of things that you're just looking for on here, we jump to page 61. We're looking at evaluate. Oh, um, this is a page 23 of 25. This is in restoring trust and confidence in the DOD. <laughs> Oh, let's get back here. So we're in a subject uh, of restoring trust and confidence in the DOD. And coming out of that, they're talking about evaluations on space intelligence and oversight. Line five, in 2021, the evaluations are, evaluation, I'll, I'll say it again, of the Department of Defense's actions regarding UAP. See classified version of PowerPoint. Well, we're not going to see the PowerPoint, but at least we can see what the heck it is we're talking about here. So, again, there are eyes at the DOD. There are people who could be doing their job, but the truth of the matter is they're not. Let's jump on now from page... Oh. What is doing that every so often? It's just freaking hiccuping at me. What is doing that? I'll deal with it later. Let's get through this, shall we? All right, let's go ahead and stop the search, and hopefully I'll keep on page 61. All right, we get through all those pages up to page 61. Here we go. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, they don't make it easy on these things. So we're at 64. This is the same document. So if we go through the same document all the way down, the only ones we're going to be having in here with reg regards to UAP is to go ahead and actually looking for restoring trust in the DOT. Oh, my God. If you ask me, that's got to be the biggest joke of the night. Holy shit. Restoring trust in the DOD. And they talk about how they're covering stuff up. Yes, if you ask me, there's not a lot of people out there who do have trust with the DOD. Gee, I wonder why. Let's move on. Yeah, it's nice. And drums going as we get through this. Believe it or not, we're on 64. We're over halfway through this document already as we're racing through it. Let's get up to the next section, all the way up to page seven. Oh, page 77, my friends. Hi. As long as you can see that, you'll be fine. So, subject to this one is uh, here we go. They want people to take them serious. Ah, uh, let's get this. I need to. Uh, We're getting there. We got it. They want people to take them seriously. Space Force wary of taking over the UFO mission. Well, I think Lou said the Space Force was all in on this. Not sure where that's coming from. This is, again, coming from the Brian Bender over a political with a complete text of the story. Again, talking about the Space Force, what Lou's saying about well, what people are saying about the Space Force and what's going on and potentially what people have learned interesting to say the least let's get on to our next email we're up to august 12th only a 2021 but you know what we're only getting through 2022 because his his term is uh, uh uh what do you call it odni ig was short if we look at our next one subject is congress weighs whistleblower safeguards after trump saga this one's coming from uh, good afternoon, FYSA. I'm going to find out what the hell that is. FYSA. Okay. Oh, let's go to here. For your situational awareness. 
I'll take that one. Congress weighs. Okay, uh, for your situational awareness, below is a, a CQ, maybe it's GQ article, not a CQ article on provisions related to the whistleblower protections included in the SSCI bill for the FY22 Intelligence Authorization Act. The relevant section of the bill, uh, oh wait, the relevant sections in the attached bill are sections two, 321 to 324. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Does this sound like what I think it sounds like? Well, the committee's new intelligence authorization bill would enable spy agency whistleblowers to more easily communicate with concerns straight to Congress. It would make the disclosure of the identity of anonymous whistleblower a crime. Uh, would also empower anyone whose name was revealed against his will, his or her will, to fight back in court. Okay, so the, the concerns came out of when an anonymous whistleblower from one of the intelligence agencies became the center of a Washington political debate that eventually led to Trump's first, first impeachment trial in January 2020. So that came out of the Trump deal, but I can't see why whistleblower's name, top recommendation, Nunes in the House, committee. I'm not seeing, it all seems to talk about Ukraine, which was uh, the Vindman guy. Are we talking about Hunter in Ukraine? And Joe, no. Capitol Hill, Capitol Hill, wrongdoing. Uh, wrongdoing. Okay. Whistleblower stuff. Not sure why exactly that's there for, okay, so... Uh, Coming up, let's move this on the timeline up to Friday, August 27th, 2021, as we're marching towards the end of the year to bring out the conversation with regards to um, the DOD's actions reg uh, of, you know, heading towards the end of the year and the signing of NDAA 2022, uh, bringing up. And on this report is, gents, have a green, great weekend. Notes on the wars, W-A-R-S. Let's find out what this is. W A R S. It's not the warehouse reporting system. <laughs> it's not the Waverly Amateur Radio Society. Well, warfare analysis and research system. That sounds close. In that, they're talking about everything else is shut down except evaluation of the DOD's actions regarding the unidentified aerial phenomena. Can't see anything else. It's all blacked out. But you can see, well, whatever it's a part of. Uh-oh. Stop that. Hold on. Otherwise, I'll forget that I did it. Holy cow! It's that time of the night again. Where I have to take my medication. Yes, if I don't go ahead and do it and make it like this, I will forget that I took it. More importantly, I'll take it too late, and that's not a good idea. So, bottoms up, everybody. Enjoy. All right, and I did it in 15 seconds. How about that? Let's continue on, shall we? Now we're all the way up to October 6, 2021, talking about the FY22 Authorization Act. Uh, where are we at? Russia, Russia, Russia. Afghanistan, anomalous clearing for victims of anomalous health threats. Nope, 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 nope. Taken together, CIA and Strong National Counterproliferation Center, China's bill, federal bill. Sorry, I'm just going through this trying to look for anything with regards to UAP being within this article. Here we go. Uh, pers persistent pursuit. Of explained of an uh, unexplained aerial phenomena uh, following a bipartisan oversight hearing on unexplained aerial phenomena the bill is carrying a bicamera provision mandating intelligence sharing with the Department of Defense's UAP task force the provision will ensure that the task force will be able to fully draw on all classified reporting about UAPs as they continue to investigate this mysterious threat. 
in U.S. airspace and our military forces. So here you can hear right here, they're aware that the Air Force and everybody has to play along. And we know early in 2022, the Air Force wasn't initially playing on. And coming into the end of spring 2022, AFOSI and others were, do, were putting on operations to go ahead and tamp down on disclosure. It's either that or it was a freaking deep state. Either way, it happened. We can't trust these guys. Absolutely. They're aware of this. They know exactly what the heck is going on. Oh, boy. Yeah, people are asking what the heck we're talking about here today. We're just getting through it. We're getting through a, a FOIA request that went to the former Inspector General uh, O'Donnell, I believe. O'Connell, O'Donnell, something like that. Oh, where is his name on here? Oh, it's it's, <laughs> it's taken off. Yeah, uh, here we go. Sean O'Donnell, the Honorable. And these are all the messages, emails, inner office things that were sent out talking about you that have UAP, UFO, uh, unidentified aerial phenomena, all those different keywords in there for them to go ahead and find it. And it took them a year and six days to deliver this report, I believe. Something like that, close enough. Over a year to deliver the report, including 400 pages, of which um, 120, 110 of the, well, actually, no, 310 of the pages, give or take, were the NDAA for 2022 and NDA and the IA, the, which is the National Defense Authorization Act for 2022. This is the one like we have for 2023 that gave us the whistleblower protections. In addition to that, we also have the IAA, which is also known as the Intelligence Authorization Act for 2022. You delete those out and John's logos. And you take it down to write, you know, around 90 something pages, not that much. So either way, we're going through, we're a good ways of the way through this document, um, making some good time in here. Thank God we're up to October 16th, 20. Well, this one is, this is going back in time. October 16th, 2020. Are you going back in time? Well, let's take a look at what we've got here either way. Uh, so this is an inspector general and in info memo. Let's shrink this down a little bit so we can kind of see what's going on. And coming out of this, uh, a re report for October 2nd to 15th, 2020. So it looks like some documents here at the end are from earlier than later. Coming through this report, space missile nuclear and something, space intelligence engineering and oversight coming from a Mr. Randy Stone. We need to look up Randy Stone. I think he could be a stoner. Yeah, I think so. Something every so often is making my freaking Mac give me freaking spins. I'm not sure what the heck's going on. I'll get past that in a bit. Could be one of the freaking drives I've got in here. I'll have to figure that out. Let's get past it. Wait a minute. I'm going too fast. I can't even see what the heck I'm looking at. Let me go to here. Scroll down. Scroll down. Here we go. Significant activities and events. Other report Under other reporting. Mr. Stone. Redacted met with redacted on october 15th 2020 to discuss unidentified aerial phenomena but hey they're saying it's significant and it is all redacted so we have to go look back at the date what happened on october 15th 2020 that's something oh i can't take a screenshot of that damn thing. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Am I already here? No. Hold on. Mr. Stone. I guess I am here. I'm almost at the bottom. Yeah, there we go. Get down a little bit more. All right. Get near the bottom of the document, actually, at this point. That's the end of the document. So what are we seeing? What do we learn from this today? Coming out of the overall piece, going through a document that's some 400 pages. Luckily, we're not going to go through NDAA and IAA because it's the original documents that they have shown within the document itself. It's one of those things, yeah, it's, it's a nothing, but the biggest thing we can take out of it, right? We got enough going on and now your BS. What is going on, Gary? <laughs> oh, sorry? Oh, can you check out the chat for me? 
or find out from W. Decker what's going on in the chat. <laughs> okay, Do I need to unmod somebody? Is someone not being playing along? <laughs> Let me have a look. Sorry, I was watching drama. It was it's got very Oh, that's easy fine. That's fine. Right, let's well, have a look. Um, what what we did learn from this whole thing. What we did learn is they are aware of anything that's coming up as far as deadlines go. They're also very aware, keenly aware of anything that's being said within the press. Like Lewis said in the past, "Hey, you know people in DC, they watch your show, Thomas. I wouldn't doubt it." I would not doubt it. They say they're watching this show, that they're watching UFO Jesus and others. Yeah, we're there. Good. We're all fine in the chat. That's good. Just want to make sure everything's going nice. Yeah, it and seems all right. Yeah, and we're having fun, Thomas. That's really good. No harm here. So interesting conversation, to say the least. All right. For the next, I want to bring in the panel, see what they think about this. Let me find Google Meet. If I can do this without screwing everything up, let me make sure one thing first here. I need to go to here. Make sure that uh, Ninja MV7 can hear that. There we go. All right. Turn down. There you go. That should go up 100%. All right. So let me go ahead and now oh, I've got where I brought it up. There it is. Let's go ahead and bring out. Let's drop in and have a new meeting. Create and start an instant meeting. Yeah. All right. Here's the link. Let me go across to the chat. Throw Can you still there. hear me at the moment? What? Can you still hear me at the moment? Yeah. Can you still hear me? Because usually when that kicks in, I no. get booed. Oh, you're not booted. You're fine. We, we learned about that last night and I fixed it. Okay. And I just made sure you're going to be able to hear this as well. Let me go ahead and uh, close that down now. Let me get over here. Also, we have something to say. You got something to say? There you go. Follow the link, guys. <laughs> I've got, got killed Bill in my head. If any of you bitches got anything else to say, now's that f***ing time. There we go. <laughs> Disclosure hunk number one is here, W. Decker, the honorary. Hey there. So on P going? is coming in. I'll go ahead as soon as I get all the people loaded in here and everything's all set up and I can actually... Hey, bud. How's it going, guys? Hey, Swan. Hey, Hey, Gary. Hey, hey Thomas. Hey, Thomas, uh, go back to that document. You missed something very important. You All right, to... one second. I'll get there in one second. I just need to... Oh, shit. I can't do that. I need to go back to... Uh, hold on. Say something for a minute, Swan. Testing, one, two, three. Okay, yeah. I know I've got control of the audio again coming from there. All right, one more time. Testing, one, two, three. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. I, I just had double audio coming out, and I the echo drives me nuts at times. Andy W. is coming in, the Yellow Tommy Tanker is coming in as well. Hey, All right, hey, Quick Swan, you were saying, go ahead and go back to that document. Which page? Um, I don't know which page, but if you control F, find uh, Rubio, because there's a conversation between Rubio, Dietrich, Grave, and Fravor that you missed. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go back to the start of the document. Go to here. And let's look for. And you can see Rubio's passion. No, Rubio's there's no passion. Rubio in here. There is. There is. If it is, it's not searchable. At least coming in from me. And I actually, let me go ahead and let me go back to here. Let me go to done. Let me go and close down this one page in case, in case it's getting screwed up by that. I should be able to do this and say Rubio. There we go. All right. So that this is coming under, yeah, the stuff they have coming in from that when it's talking about Rubio. That's that's a sixty minutes dialogue. No, no, no. There's there's Rubio wasn't on sixty minutes. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was. Marco. This is the uh, six. Okay. They're saying no, Marco because, Rubio. Anything that enters airspace that's not supposed to be there no, is a no, threat. No, but there's a part of Rubio saying that every you know a lot of people that I talk to a lot of my staffers are very interested in this subject, but some people still laugh and ridicule it. I never heard him say that on 60 Minutes. The other one is the CQ article on provisions related to whistleblower protections. Uh, Rubio ch uh, chimes in on part of uh, page 81. Rubio, the top Republican panel, supports new proposals. The measure includes the Intelligence Committee's inspectors, blah, blah, blah. Rubio Aid said that the statement to the roll call, that's it, nothing for there. 
But then if I go back, the only other spot they have reference of Marco Rubio saying things is, is literally from the 60 Minutes report. And Rubio was on the 60 Minutes report. Was he on 60 Minutes? Yeah, he was, yeah. So anything from in here that was coming from Rubio, that you know, let me bring it up right now. Actually, people can't go ahead and see this. I'm looking at it, not showing it. Let me get to back to the desktop zoom really quick. As you can see, taking a look here, as we're in the document for 60 minutes, I well, I see why am I. 60 minutes aired a segment la on last evening's, uh, wait, on last evening on UAP that spurred concern and interest by Congress and the DOD. So this is all purely, seriously, it's all 60 minutes, and the only stuff we've got from him, was, I mean, I think we everybody's seen the 60 minutes piece, so we could go over what Marco said again, but this is just, again, stuff that he had said going back in uh, May 17th of 2021. Okay, then my bad. Ah, not a problem. Hey, hey, you tried, and I appreciate you pushing me on this because if I miss something, I want people to freaking pat me on the shoulder and say, look here. All right, where the heck was I? Let's go ahead and get this over to here. Bring this around if I get that there. So what does this mean about the report? We really need to push Senator Gillibrand to go and hound Arrow for the report. Other than that, we're never going to get it. Right. Well, it's not. It's not just um, Rubio. I mean, it's not. It's not just. Those, it's not just Gillibrand. It's all the centers who are part of that conversation. I tell you. We just have to figure out who they are, where they're at, and most importantly, what we can do to get them to force them to come forward with proper information. Greg O'Brien was here, but he stepped out. Let me go ahead and see who we all have in here. Oh, not that one. People in the chat, no one's got their hand up. Uh, w. Decker, you made it in as well. Welcome, my friend. How you doing? I'm doing really well. How about you? Pretty good, pretty good. Just want to welcome everybody into the chat before we get into the deep conversation and everything. I appreciate you stopping in today to go ahead and talk about where we're at. Greg O'Brien's back again. Um, Thank you for having us. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we have uh, Andy uh, Yellow Tanker. <laughs> yeah, Yellow tanker. tanker Andy, yeah. also known as Andy. YTT, <laughs> Yellow Tanker Tommy. <laughs> How you doing, hiya, my friend? Uh, hi, hiya, Thomas. Yeah, not too bad now. Thanks. Yeah, early in the morning there. Right. Thanks thanks oh, for coming around yeah, today. Thanks, Appreciate right. it. And our final okay. person we got that came in today so far is the Greg O'Brien. How you doing, Greg? Hey, Thomas, what's up, man? How are you? I appreciate you having me on, and uh, I appreciate everybody's... Uh, you changed you know, your icon value. again, Hal. How, oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, can I ask? Yeah, what's up? I was just going to say, I was going to ask, what is your icon? It's it's an Indian god, I think. Yeah, it's called uh, the Tripping Elephant. It's basically... It, it's it, you should Hey, see that's the, not uh, funny. You sh you said you wouldn't show anybody that picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's um, it's actually a really cool picture. You can only see so little of it right now, but it's uh, yeah. it's wild. But yeah, thanks guys, I appreciate it. And um, I look forward to uh, jumping in after you guys oh, uh, yeah. take over. Great conversation, thanks, everything. I just want to go ahead and throw this out really quick. Got a super chat coming in from the audience, going ahead and uh, saying, "I love the panel of guests coming from Cable Guys. Thanks for coming in, guys. I greatly appreciate that. Thanks for that wonderful super chat. Remember, it's only." What a great way to support Disclosure tonight. Heck, it's the only way to, to how to go ahead and support Disclosure tonight. Super chats, super stickers, it, it all goes to the same place, although YouTube does take 30% out of it. Either way, I appreciate it. I, I am very thankful for everything, and thank you for supporting the show, Cable Guy. Greatly appreciate it. On that matter, let me just tone this down a little bit in the background. And as we got the panel, so I want to throw this out here to the group. You heard, you, you heard me go through the document. You saw the stuff that was there. Not a lot of stuff there, but we are seeing, if you want to call it, uh, the government having awareness of what kind of is going in on their front and what the public are seeing in their perspective to what's really going on behind the scenes. It's, uh, a very it's very interesting that they're keeping a record of what's being released, what the public is like um, showing. Yeah. Have you ever 
Uh, the CIA reading room does this. I'm not sure if you've gone in there. The CIA, we've gone in for a, through a lot of the documents that have been declassified throughout the years. We'll notice that coming from a lot of different, uh, oh, what do you want to call it? Uh, Thomas. Oh, Thomas. Uh, locations around the world where the CIA has and where we have embassies, there's actually a lot of information finding from local newspapers, local uh, reporters, local reports that are happening, and all of those piece, details of information get passed up to the CIA because it's international. At least we've got something here to see what's going on within the United States. So on. Um, I was just going to say, this FOIA didn't move the needle, not even like a little bit. It was a big, fat, nothing burger. Did it give us a good idea of the information that the IG uh, uh, deals with and potentially with UAP? Nope, not really. Did it show you that they're aware of all the other uh, press articles and he's getting copied of all the stuff that's going on coming from the outside looking in? Yeah, but that, that's nothing big. I mean, Well, it's a, it gives us some insight. So you can look at it from a negative standpoint and say it's a nothing burger. I'm going to look at it and say, you know what? It didn't give us a lot. But what it's doing is it's showing that the people within the DOD, all the information, all the conversations with it, all the stuff that's going on isn't related to that one particular area. There's a discussion. There's a, there's a buzz conversation going in many different areas throughout the Pentagon. And this kind of, if you want to call it, paints that picture, which we haven't had before. Least- well, and Thomas, if, I don't, if, I, if you don't mind me saying for a second... I think we're missing the um, kind of subtle uh, clues that this offers, which is printing this FOIA request for um, John Greenwald probably is why Avril Haynes hasn't been able to print the report. It's been clogging up the system. They only have one printer for the government. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> it is a, it hey, Gary, are you on one too? I also wanted to say that, you know, it's really Where's funny. That, Gary, can uh, you hear them talk? Jesus Christ. Go ahead. I'll I'll deal with this in a second. I just wanted to say, you know, have you guys noticed that John Greenwald, Greenwald was called in the press release? But, like, um, the Pentagon's bitch, he he didn't get called. Like, it's honestly a slap, a slap to the face for it. It shows so much disrespect that they called him, but they knew that they weren't going to answer any of his questions, but they called him just to humiliate him. Yeah. I, 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 could, I could hear that. Ab, um, are you speaking? We are summoning the real great spirit of Gary. Yes. All right. Uh, quick thing. I want to go ahead and bring in really quick. We did get Sorry, a super- what? Oh, <laughs> can you hear the guys talk? Yeah. I can, can you, yeah, can you hear, can you guys hear Gary? We cannot hear Gary. Okay, uh, let me fix that in one second. Hold on, that's oh, it's in uh, meaty L M L M meat audio. Really? You don't hear? Let me see what audio I've got hooked up to you guys. Hold on. Uh, hey, settings. Oh, that's why. I need to go to meat audio. There we go. Is that in me? Can you guys ACs? still hear me in the back? Decker, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. But, but can now, you hear me? Gary, say something. Yay, there's Gary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here, Gary. <laughs> See, Gary. we just needed some Barbara. Great. That's all we need. Now you can hear Gary. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I love this system. Let me go ahead and go back to Gary just on monitor and output. Me, Thomas, now I can hear you. Thomas, oh, shit. Oh, there we go. There we go. But you know what? To match, we got another super chat coming that I need to address really quick. We got a great super chat coming in from Dave from Spaced Out Radio saying Thomas loves, where's that at? Thomas loves a cold glass of prune juice on Tuesday evenings. Better than that. I've got fresh prunes just for you. If I could go ahead, there we go. Let's give Dave a good old prune, shall we? Other brands of prunes are available. From one prune to another, there you go, Dave. Take a good bite of that one. Ah, is that Ladies good? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, uh, 
Also, and I'll get one myself. That way, we the... can both prune out together. <laughs> uh, we, we will soon Don't be overdo launching it. the. <laughs> hey, Thomas, I think we should uh, soon launch on the Disclosure Hunks store, the merch store. The Disclosure Tonight <laughs> prunes. <laughs> prunes. <laughs> Love the California raisins. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much for that uh, super chat coming in from Dave from uh, Space Dot Radio. I appreciate every freaking super chat uh, that comes in. And if you get a chance, check out Space Dot Radio after disclosure tonight's over. Promptly at 9 o'clock. On that note, back to the crew, back to the audience, back to saying, Russ, you were saying, you guys were saying. I think I was just going to mention that we're also having a sale on Avi Lube this week. <laughs> Avi Lube. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. yeah. Oh, you, ha- you guys saw it, that it's post. to assist you when the men in black come around. <laughs> you, you got, did you guys see the post on the channel for that one? I'll have to bring it up. Where are we at? Uh, where are we at? Uh, community. You sent it to us on a chat, I think. Did no, you guys here we go. Avi I'll bring it out uh, and show it for the screen. There we go. <laughs> Avi Loop. Yes. We interrupt your regularly scheduled program with a message from message not from our sponsor. <laughs> Did you guys see the thing from um, Avi Loop? From- this is one of those days where we have to go ahead and lay back and relax because when you're feeling dirty from a four and a half hour drive to spread this info, don't forget to stop by Avi Loop. Avi Loop! Where you'll never find the truth and only a cover up. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we're back. <laughs> oh, my. You're the one who brought me here. Wes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I confess. Yeah, absolutely. Have, <laughs> having some fun here tonight. The, so, the so, lobby. <laughs> so Swan call this, calls this a nothing burger. I could kind of see that maybe. Uh, you're not quite seeing it there. How did you describe it again, West? I just said something totally irrelevant. Um, I, I, <laughs> I, I didn't really see much in it myself either, to be honest. But I, I, So I'm going to take a neutral position. A neutral. Andy W, where do you take this one? What do you think about the stuff we covered? Is yeah. it a nothing, nothing burger, or there was a little bit of an insight? I, I don't think it was much. I think it's pretty near enough, like Solon said, and, and Wes, uh, it's a nothing burger. We did get a new name there, I think, around the stone. And I did look up. I think I put a link to who he is uh, in chat. So um, I got it here somewhere. Uh, he's. If I've gone to the right one, he's Assistant Inspector General for Evaluations of Space, Intelligence, Engineering, and Oversight. Wow, Bit that's of a mouthful. Well, yeah, that's, that's reading off of his. Um, the link is is um, actually just above where, where Thomas put in the link to, to the chat for us uh, to come in. Um, so it's uh, www.dod. Can you, uh, uh, are you on your, if you're on your PC, can you paste that in the chat or can you yeah, go ahead? Yeah, and... I will, I will re, repaste it. Hang on a minute. Cause if, let me put the uh, screen up a bit bigger and then I can copy. Oh, if out. it does that, it's not going to see it. If you can just, sh- you know what, uh, where I can, I can bring up the doc if you want to talk, if you want to talk about it or just, just talk about, uh, just talk us through it, Andy. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, no. Um, yes. Yeah, it's is um, department of defense office of inspector general. Actually, website. if you want to share it, you actually can. I couldn't yeah, take I'll, a full I'll, screen. I'll, I'll link. I'll, I'll do that in a minute. Hang on a minute. Yeah. I'm not very okay with laptop no, PCs, That's okay. I'm afraid. I like okay. you and West. But hopefully, I've, I've linked it again. It's there now. Oh, there it is. I got it. Yeah. I was saying you could actually open up there and share it on the screen, and I could bring it up and show it. But either way, yeah, uh, let's go yeah. ahead and do this. So uh, this is co- this is coming from the document you're saying. This is from, uh, let me get across to here, the Department of Defense. Office is Inspector General. Let me go ahead and shut down that little chat here really quick. Uh, General, uh, Assistant Inspector General for Evaluations of Space Intelligence, Engineering, and Oversight. So he is the Assistant General for, okay, we just said that. In the capacity, he is responsible for conducting evaluations, special investigations, and reviews of sensitive DOD programs, weapons systems, and operations. He's also responsible for the DOD audit which we have found they are non-compliant once again, um, and criminal investigation policy, which we may need because they're, they, people have said there's a lot of criminal activities 
that have been going on within the DOD with respect to the UFO program. So this guy could end up being one of the people who are going to be doing investigations. Let's see, you know, prior to MDA, Stone represented NASA's Office and Safety Mission Assurance and served nine years at the Safety Flight Assurance Manager for the Delta Launch Vehicle and Associated Industrial Base. Um, his, prior to his current position, <coughs> he was uh, served eight years the DOD's inspe- uh, the DOD OI Office of Inspector General, Deputy Inspector General for Policy and Oversight. So he's moved up. So well, Thomas, good catch. Is this Robert Stone? Randolph Stone. Gillibrand mentioned him, and when he well, so Gillibrand asked him, "Are you do you know anything about UAPs?" And he said, "No." Then she said that famous line, "Can you please memorize memorize yourself with this?" Is this the guy like that, that was just uh, appointed? Yeah, yeah, he was at that meeting, and he completely looked shocked when Gillibrand told him to get his shit together. Oh, during his confirmation hearing? Yeah, that okay. was him, right? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Let's look him up. Okay, so this is the confirmation hearing. No, that was for a different, oh, guy. A different guy. That's Robert Storch. So this guy was being a uh, confirmation okay. hearing for the Department of Defense, DOD Inspector General. What is his position? And your current position is NA, NSA Inspector General. So he's coming to the Inspector General's office. What was he going to be at? Okay. Uh, DOD's IG nominee. So I guess he's maybe the new one, Inspector General at the DOD, but he's different from Randolph Stone. Yeah, it's just so interesting that we have a Inspector General for evaluations of space intelligent intelligence engineering and over. It's just a very odd grouping of categories. Yeah, but in his capacities for conducting evaluations, special investigations, and review of DOD sensitive programs weapon systems and operations so it sounds like he's got the clearance for dealing with this he's responsible oh, yeah. for auditing the dod i mean so they're looking at this from a from a good perspective and he has an faa license for airframe maintenance he does yeah it's in the it's they put mention it in his bio at the bottom nice well it's just such a weird thing to mention about oh, somebody who's in a uh here we go role. Mr. Mr. Stone has a bachelor in science and engineering technology. He's a level three certified. He's a level three certified by the Defense Acquisition Corps in production quality and manufacturing, and has an FFIE licensed airframe and power plant and a power plant technician. He's also a recipient of the Secretary of Defense Medal for Meritorious Civil Service, the MDA Star Award, the MDA Director Principal Award, and six NASA Group and Special Act Awards. The National and the National Silver Quality Award and numerous corporate awards. Let's give a good hand for our next cut. And don't forget, in second grade, he got a gold star for attendance. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so at least we did learn about someone else in the IG now. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, that's no problem, Thomas. I thought I'd have a quick look while you were uh, busy. So yeah, more yes. eyes looking, the better. Absolutely. Greg, you had your hand up. Let's hear your uh, uh, devil's advocate to the other side of everybody else. Yeah, no, nah, it's, it's just funny to me, but um, just brilliant conversation, everybody, and um, just humble to be a part of it. Swan, what is your what is your most favorable outcome to this whole thing? Like, what is what is the end goal in your mind? What's going to make Swan be like, OK, this is it. It's happened. Nothing, no more is to hear. What, what, what's what going to make that? Swan squeal uh, like he's at a Beatles concert? Hey, what's going to be Swan Swan song? Huh. Uh, a church, a church committee, and then this year an admission from the government that we are dealing with the non-human intelligence. I don't okay. need to know about crash retrievals, alien bodies. Just admit that, and I'm a happy camper. Okay, and so I mean, and so then my next question is: then what? What's your 
definition is that's your definition of uh quote unquote disclosure yeah okay do you think that's everybody's disclosure no but that's just mine that's just yours i was just wondering i mean like what i'm just trying to think what 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 is what is under the umbrella for everybody what's it going to take for everybody to be like okay this is this is it you know i mean not just you know your truth or my truth you know because every at the end of the day everybody has their own truth right so does that make yeah. Every the, one of every other the biggest one thing, of us a liar. The biggest thing well, that, no, I mean, that we it's, it's all a personal opinion, right? I mean, yeah, everybody has right? their own disclosure. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest thing I think That's if I could problem. jump on this little thing here for a second, guys. The biggest thing that I think we need to see if we really want to make this forward, we need to come out and have them uncover the lies, the misinformation, and disinformation. So the American people know that this government has been lying to them and covering it up and make people feel stupid and get, have people, you know, lose their sanity, cause unteen, you know, ruining umpteen million, you know, thousands of people's lives throughout the year and something to say, yes, we've been lying about it. It's real. That's okay. what the American people need to hear. The okay, turn say of that. and start accepting this. Their lies have to be, have to come out. Say that happens, Thomas, right? What next? What happened? What follows that? Oh, it's one of many pieces. I mean, if we're going to have that, then we're going to start. Uh, what do we need? Then the bodies come we, out. Well, <laughs> the bodies, the ships. We know the ships right now are the PSYOP. We're, we need to find, I mean, honestly, what we really need to know, the most important thing that we could possibly find out what's going on, I don't care about their craft. I don't care about how their craft work. I don't care how superior they are beyond us. Why are they here and what the fuck are they doing? That's what we need to know. Yeah, they need to go beyond the whole craft itself and start identifying these pilots. Right. That to me that's a that's a huge step. To me that's a that's almost there in my opinion. And, and you know like how you were saying yours was um you know at the end of the day swan, you know to me that that's it for me. So yeah. Well, I, I you know, you know what I was thinking. If they what? admit this is a non-human intelligence, they don't. They're probably not going to want the scientific community to go ahead and start investigating where they live and all the bases that they have, and all that. So they're probably going to need some congressional law saying, "Look, for a time being, you cannot go. You cannot. This ind independent scientific communities cannot go for do some kind of explore exploration." looking for these kind of beings because, uh, under a, under national security or something like that. Um, if you um, don't mind, I have a, a thought on this. Um, have any of you um, watched the aerial phenomenon, the movie about the kids in Zimbabwe that saw the UFO? Okay. No, yes. Gary hasn't found it yet. <laughs> I have it. I'll, I'll 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 figure out a way to we to, transfer yeah, watch it yeah um the one of the things that surprised me when I heard the kids um, uh, describe the uh, event was wow it was a UFO and wow there were actual you know two figures that they saw you know small gray like aliens wearing black spacesuits one oh, yeah, standing on the craft. One not silver, it's black. It's tight. <laughs> but the thing that was really crazy is they all described that one of the aliens was on the ground running, but he seemed to be running in slow motion, and it was almost like he was glitching or something. And the um, and then they also described that the craft, as they they first saw it in the sky, and then they didn't see it. And then they saw it in the field, but then sometimes they weren't sure if there was anything in the field at all. It seemed kind of normal, but then they thought there was still something there. So to me, I think what will really make this, um, this all become something that we can all start to like wrap our, or not wrap our heads around, but all agree is absolutely something that we can't figure out is if, an event like that with those kind of really unusual characteristics has been captured you know, on video or um, somehow recorded so that that can be shared with people so that 
I can not only just see, hey, yeah, it's like UFOs like we would imagine, it's little aliens like we can imagine, but they could also see the high strangeness aspect that goes along with it because that will become something that people will not be able to explain or, or explain away easily. And it will, for the for a certain group of people, hopefully um, some imaginative scientists spark their curiosity yeah. and ignite a whole new um, kind of revolution in how we start investigating what's going I on. Mean, you're, I mean, we're talking about kids being close and the kids themselves going ahead and talking about them personally experiencing a localized distortion in time, space, yep. and space time. Yep, and and then also describing um, something, some form of like tele, um, I mean tele telekinesis. But here's the thing: they sh they showed the kids stuff. They showed the kids, and the kids know that they were we're going to show you what's going to go on in the world. Well, if actually, you, if right, well, yeah, no, you're right. But it was um, one of the things that uh, a couple of the kids mentioned was, uh, yes, they they did get images and stuff, just like you're describing. Well, it's not really but, images; it's more than images. Yeah, it's literally like you're seeing it, but it's not that. It's like you're there and you're experiencing it. And the kids, when they talked about it, it talked how they felt. Not exactly. how the aliens were telling them how they felt. It was the kids reacting to what the hell they were seeing. Exactly. And it wasn't like a um, message saying you should really clean up nope. your planet. What it was just the kids felt like they were just telling them this is what's going on. It there wasn't they like, showed them being moral. Like there was no moral to the story. They just were be like, here, they showed them what's happening with all the trees being cut down. And the kids saw it. And then, yeah. you know, it's like I saw something from the late 1800s uh, here in the Pacific Northwest. It was a tree that was cut down by these fucks, 1,370 years old, 14 feet across. And they felt like, wow, look at this. Let's clear cut them all down. Just craziness what we've done in the United States to rape our planet and, and the civilization and everybody that lived here. But that's another conversation. But then, not only that, they also showed them things not being able to breathe and dying from it. They described it. If, if we cut all the trees, there's not going to be enough air and we won't have enough to breathe. So the kids saw that. And when, when we say kids, by the way, for people who don't know this um, story, this is in the 90s and it wasn't a few kids. It was the entire school was on the playground while the teachers were having like a teacher's conference so this was upwards of 70 or 80 kids who witnessed this event. And um, the uh, BBC got wind of it. So they had a camera crew there within the next day, which is why we have all the footage, um, not of the of event itself, but of the um, kids being interviewed. And then John Mack, the um, famous UFO researcher um, who uh, was the head of Harvard's um, uh, school of medicine head of psychiatry he flew out there and personally interviewed a bunch of the kids and was convinced that they were telling you know the truth about what they saw oh, yeah. it was uh, and it's just and the reaction to some of the kids too but it's not um, really seeing it it's literally like you're experiencing it west there's a difference yeah. from seeing a picture of something and then there's a, an, a part of it where you're seeing it and it's this live thing, and it's like you're there, and you've got a memory of being there. Exactly. Well, and in a bit of synchronicity uh, tonight, I was watching a video that uh, Renee had mentioned earlier in the chat that is um, an interview with uh, this British pilot who was um, – uh, he and a friend were flying over the Grand Canyon just uh, in a, a smaller plane – and witnessed a uh, UFO, and they also had a similar description of this. They they saw it approaching their plane at one point, thought they were going to get hit by it, then um, reestablished control of their plane, and then both of them had this feeling it's right off to their left. So they both were looking at the left side of their plane, and he described 
we couldn't see it, but we knew it was there. And his um, his description of that feeling was he's like, it felt like it was moving faster than what our eyes could process, but the motion somehow was still registering in some part of our brain. So we were able to see that it was there. And he went back into the back of the plane, pulled out his camera, brought it forward, and then snapped two pictures, one of which caught this uh, UFO on, uh, on, on film. Nice. And so my point in these two stories is that there's this nuts and bolts kind of um you know attitude we often all want because it just would be it, it it brings the ufo um story into a um a narrative that is familiar it's just saying, like, okay, keep on the conversation it. going guys um yeah. pass it around i need to go ahead and keep it going to west whatever the conversation sure. i like this thing about aerial school it's a great conversation let's keep on talking about this i need cupcakes got to go off front so yeah no problem um, so I'll quickly wrap up and pass it to someone else, but, um, what the, um, these, <clears throat> so with the nuts and bolts thing, it makes it easier for us to kind of maybe accept some of this, um, these ideas, because we can imagine this may be us some, sometime in the future. It's, um, still, we can think of it as our universe still makes sense. It's just, there's uh, some cool sci-fi like technology we haven't gotten yet. But what these kids described and what this pilot described was, yes, a presence of a nuts and bolts craft and even alien beings, but also some unusual reality as if these beings were exist, you know, coming from maybe another dimension or maybe it's their technology that's causing this. But the idea being there's something going on in reality right in front of our faces that we evidently as human beings with our sense organs and brains can partially process, but not completely process or make sense of. And that to me would be the, um, I don't know. It just seems to me that that would change the conversation and um, perhaps uh like I said, inspire um, some people to like truly um, imagine all kinds of different things about the way reality works that we just haven't considered really yet. So who wants to go next? I'm feeling like Andy's about to say something. Andy. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know a lot about the aerial um, school. I've heard of it. Um, it's, it's, it's almost like you say it's almost into the, goes into this realm of interdimensional again it's it's like they're they're basing between dimensions um yep. i've seen so many things we spoke the other week um in my time it's 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 almost like you get to the point of seeing so many different things that people think you're crazy you know um i've had sightings of ufos uh potential ghosts um i did I do believe I once saw a shadow person. I think it falls into that same sort of realm. Um, yeah. You, you, you look at, I looked up, it was at my parents' house. Um, I looked up and it so instantaneous, so this figure was there and then it wasn't. It was almost like it, it tripped out somewhere else um, when, it, when it realized I was looking at it. Mm -hmm. um i think it's something like this with with these uh, the aerial um school thing um and also um nathan uh it was um nathan forrest i think put in the in the chat a bit earlier and i did answer it he said well why would they um appear before children and we're quite unusual us in the, this group but we're we're open to this subject by being experiencers or or whatever way and I, I think one of the reasons they possibly appear before these children is because their minds aren't closed off like most adults. Um, they, they were easier to to reach. Um, you know, I, I put, um, again, another thing for me, I, I throughout my life, I've had deja vu. Um, as I've got older, it's dissipated. It's still here. I actually had one yesterday. Um, and it's, I think, as we grow older as well, where our minds change, we become more 
uh, beaten down by life is is what I'll say. But you know how how life affects us and everything. We we lose that spark of childhood, um, and the further you get into it, um, yeah. So I, I, whether whether that was one of the reasons why they appeared, I, I honestly don't know. That's actually a really good um, uh, hypothesis. I, I I could see that actually being the case because. Um, kids haven't yet learned how to just sort of um, <laughs> live in their own version of the world as much as we probably do as adults. Um, so a, a quick question. So you were mentioning that shadow person. Um, sometimes people describe those shadow people like in the context of um, uh, uh, what's the, um, like sleep paralysis and stuff like that. But it sounds like mm -hmm. yours was a waking um, event I, where you were doing something, right? I, yeah, I was fully awake. You know, I was I was living at my parents' house. Um, I, w I went to the bathroom, to the toilet. I came out, and it was my sister's old bedroom. And I happened to look up, which was directly in front of me, and and this black outline was there, and then it wasn't. Wow! Um, it was so so quick that I still can't quantify was it real or did I really see this? You know, I've had I've had sightings of what I would call UFOs, and these things were long enough to say. I've seen these things, these objects. It, it it was almost like you snapped your fingers, and it it was there, and, and it wasn't. So it's always played on my mind. Did I really see that, or was it a trick of my mind? Was it whatever? Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think that's fascinating. Do you remember if you um, if you could detect uh, anything about the outline? Like, did you see him or her wearing a hat or anything like no, that? No, I mean, yeah. It was it was so quick. I literally looked up. It was there, and then it won. And it was purely just like a black shape, a black a black form of a, 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 a I would say a male, but I'm not sure. A sort of standing, and it whether it looked at me or whatever have you. It it was literally you know like you blink and it's gone. You know, it, yeah. it was that quick. And by the way, real quick, I'll turn it back over to Thomas. Uh, but um. For people in the chat, I'm going to post a link to that YouTube video that I was talking about, about the British pilot, who um, mm -hmm. it's a great short video mm -hmm. where he describes that um, seeing it but not being able to see it uh, kind of thing. So if anybody's interested, uh, I'll post And yes, that. West, sometimes they, sometimes they wear hats. Yeah, I, I, that's why I ask is that I'd um, heard. Yeah, I, I per personally, I, I didn't see anything like that. It was, it was instantaneous. You know, I, I'm still I used in my to mind, go through a room that was not much bigger than where I'm sitting in right now, about a, you know, I have to measure the cross 11 by 14 or something like that, and going across it. And there were a bunch of people within this room that I'd go through. Some, it got turned bigger throughout time. But as I was, I was probably eight years old, so I was shorter at that a lot shorter than i am now at that time when i was i felt like i was at a family reunion and i was like kind of going back and forth between the people who were all shadows and they all were like different you know different hats different get-ups and the whole thing it just felt like you know you go back and look at it now now this is uh you know you look at it and it's like different times different things, whatever it was, was I going through an area that was all different incarnations of myself? Because I felt like I was with family. It was either relatives or it was different versions of myself that I was going through. And I, you know, I went through that scenario many, many times when I go out of body, it'd be the first place that I go through. I leave, go out through this plane of area where all these things were, get to the other side of the room. There was another door, open that door and I go off and do other stuff. It was really freaking cool. I miss those days. Yeah, that does sound cool. Um, just everybody, I um, posted a link, but this one actually is from the um, kids from the aerial school um, first, um, and then I'll see if I can find that other one and post it next. Nice. Thanks. Appreciate that. Yep. Cool. All right. As we're uh, wrapping down, we've got seven minutes left before nine o'clock. We turn this thing down. I need to spend some time with Cupcake tonight. She's got a little bit of a limp, and I need to make sure she's okay. So, um what other things do we have going in chat land, guys? Looks like Crypto, you joined us late at the show today. Yeah, I did. Uh, and I heard the question about what would represent full disclosure. I think the 23-minute video that Lou Elizondo saw and Tim Burchett, you saw that on the 6 o'clock news? The whole public would be all on board with this. 
Yeah. Problem solved. What well, we think? need that. Plus, we also need that admission that they've been lying about this stuff for all this time. That's important. Well, at that point, don't you think it goes hand in hand? Once they throw oh, that no. video, they'd be like, oh, they've been lying the whole time. One child abused by a priest does not a movement make. We need to get all of the info, and part of it is them coming to the truth and saying, well, yeah, we were covering up. We were lying about this stuff. We were spreading misinformation, disinformation. And here are all the people out there that are in that area. Or here's all the incidents that this happened. We need, you know, up until, look at this. It just happened again in 2022, 2023. It's still going on. We need the has truth. The FBI, has the FBI ever investigated any of those um, allegations or, you know, or anything like that? You'd think the FBI would get involved, right? The FBI could have been involved. We're going to find out. Do you trust the FBI based on all the different things you've heard that's been going on with it? I sure as hell don't. Do you trust the CIA, DOD, any of these programs? Oh, hell no. And as far as the 23-minute video is concerned, I would I would have to see what that video consisted of, you know, to, yeah. to actually go ahead and say anything about it. But, I mean, do you, do you think the video exists, first of all, um, Mike? And second of all, um, what, what do you think? Any idea to or hopes to what's in there? Well, I think, yeah, number one, the answer to your question is yes. I absolutely believe that that video exists because... Two, the second answer to that part of the question is Lou Elizondo saw it himself and he described parts of it. It's so close and in detail, not far away and blurry, that you can actually see the occupants with That's not the what crib. he said. That's not what he said. And a lot of people are doing this wrong. He said you can see occupancy. He didn't say yeah. you could see the occupants. You can see occupancy. But you probably can't admit that there are things or what's in there. But he can describe it as that you can see occupancy. Take it however you want. Those are the exact words. And we have to be careful because Lou always chooses his words very differently. And just by changing one thing to something else, changes it around. Well, then, then Tim Burchett also saw it. And he described that once anyone sees that, there will be no doubt in your mind that they exist and they're here. That's mm -hmm. the bottom line. And that would apply to... The average person that doesn't really know anything about this, they would be conclusive. When did he say that? I'll have to look back. I want to see that. He said that when he recently, in an article that came out, it was like last week, where he made a quote that he hasn't been read in, but somebody that, that is read in, that he works with in, in the Senate, in Congress, told him that about the video. He saw the video. How? And then he said, Th those videos are going to be locked down to a skiff. That's not going to come out where anyone's going to have on their laptop or their Android or iOS phone. Yeah, but he said he saw it within the Congress. So however they did that, he didn't specify. But he did say he saw it. And he did say that anybody that would see that immediately would realize they're real, they're here. And there's no, there's no doubting that. That's what he said. So I believe him because he's been one of the people on the forefront of this subject and disclosure. And, you know, he doesn't bullshit. So him and Lou. Lou doesn't bullshit. Tim Burchett doesn't bullshit. They have nothing to gain by bullshitting about this. So I would take what they both said. And I believe that. Yeah. I have a feeling if we saw it, it would be beyond a shadow of a doubt for us as well. Right. But we're going to have to come out with the fact that they've been lying to us. And that, that's going to take a year and a half before we're going to see that. Yeah, you're right. Oh, all longer. 2024. No, no, 2024 is by the the date that they have to come forward with any of the legacy stuff that went out there. And you know they're not going to bring out stuff as they discover it. They're going to hold everything back until the last possible moment. And it could be like now. And they'll just let, see the date and let it go by. Because there's no teeth. There's nothing that leverages them to force them to comply. That's the problem. Congressional committee, a church committee, let's go ahead and bring them in. And if they, you know, if they get into finding out where these secret programs are, then let them go ahead and uh, to find these illegal programs and push the people across for prosecution by the Justice Department. Yeah, but that could still turn out even if they take the 18 months like they stipulated and go back to the 1940s. That a lot of that stuff they can say is falling under national security, yeah. which no. means they don't have to release it. President, by presidential decree, can pardon anybody.
That's and all true. this shit did come from the executive branch. All of it well, was from the executive branch. Do you really think that Biden would be pardoning anybody on this topic? I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, never know. That you would be never know suicide. how far deep and wide this field of shit goes. I don't want to deep. I don't see how far I need to deepen uh, to dive into this. Find out how deep it is. LM, welcome. We're just at the end of the show. How you doing, my friend? Oh, I'm doing good. Thanks. I was just jumping in. Um, yeah, I think that they would pardon everybody. I honestly, I, I do because it's gonna. I mean, wow. Yeah, I, I could just imagine it all just gets pardoned, kind of like, hey, we had to do it. But I also, as far as like political suicide and the president being, you know, impeached over whatever, I don't think so. If we're coming that close to disclosure, and I'm not trying to fear monger it, they're going to have policies in place to uh, kind of like just freeze everything as it is. A president going out the door where people aren't going to care about him, where his mind's not there anymore, he's not going to know about it and go ahead and sign it, pardon anybody he wants. Yeah, I agree. That's pretty much all I had to say. Everything's been great tonight, though. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah, great conversation. Everybody around. Holy cow, what a great show. What a great audience. What a great time as we coming down to the end of the show. Holy cow. Um, anything hey, else? Thomas. Final words? Greg? Hey, Thomas. Yeah, I just, real, real quick. I just want to say um, these are probably some of the most important conversations that you're, you know, these roundtables that you're having that are actually around right now. And it's so important to hear everybody else's opinion and even have a friendly debate, which is all about. And I don't see really any good debates happening, you know, anywhere. And I, I think that's where a lot of the truth comes out, you know, because yeah. I mean, just being around everybody, you know, here and in the chat, I, I've learned so much and my, my opinion, you know, varies from day to day. And it's just, you know, at the end of the, where do we go? So I just, I just appreciate everybody. Thanks, man. Thank yeah, you, Thomas. No problem. Well said. Absolutely. Uh, one final so super chat of the day coming in. Last one. This one coming in from Nikki X1. Looks like it's just a dog sticker. <laughs> hey, it's Cupcake. There we go. Not quite, but it's Spuds McKenzie. <laughs> there we go. Holy cow. Let's go ahead and bring this up as we get into it. No, wrong one. Ah, uh, last super chat of the night. This one coming in from Nikki X1. Thanks for all the great support, everybody. Thanks for the great conversation. What a great night. Holy cow, what a great conversation. I know we've been running late these are days, but I am neglecting Cupcake in the time of hour where she needs me the most. So I want to thank everybody for coming out here tonight to this conversation. Yeah, we had a, a great talk. We had some different things to get through tonight. It wasn't exactly what it was, but we did learn. To, we get, did get to learn some new people. Oh, sorry. In the... Uh, in the DOD, and we'll see where it possibly goes from there. Again, I want to thank everybody for their wonderful Super Chats. More importantly, let me just jump in. Let me just take a look here and see what we got. Let me take a look in the back office. Right. Those are my glasses. <laughs> Click the freaking button. Holy cow. Where are we at? What's going on? How are we getting there? Is it going to happen? Is it not? Are we going to continue? I don't know. Uh, let me go ahead, and I lost it. I had it close to me. I know it was here. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Your studio, YouTube studio. <coughs> Would you look at that? Holy cow, 1,468 subs. Help us get the 5,000. We've got 700, well, eight. yes, 800 and freaking 32 to go. Help us get there, everybody. Wow, what a great audience. But more importantly, what great support coming in from the show tonight. More love from the audience. I, I, I'm, I'm really... Uh, if you want to call it uh, humbled by everyone's great support for the show, holy cow. Let me get in there and one more time as I go ahead and thank the people who gave us Super Chats tonight. Uh, Nikki X1, uh, Spaced Out Radio, uh, Cable Guy, uh, Sawan P, uh, Joseph Syracuse, Pam Harris. Well, today, yeah, Pam Harris, of course. Uh, Royal Morning Blue, uh, W. Decker. And W Decker, that's it. Wow, well, great support. Appreciate all the support, but it's not just the it's not just the people from the super chats. My God, it's the people from the chat. Uh, I'm gonna uh, welcome and say, "We're gonna change off this music." There we go. Do us a favor, hit that like button if you had a good time. If not, hit that subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. Do us a favor. Uh, I'd love to have you as a regular subscriber here on the show. More importantly. I want to thank the people who are still in the chat, man. Another, well, 
dang it, they're doing it again. They're not going to let me shut down. London calling, it's Royal Morning Blue, saying just a pound 79, saying thank you very much, appreciate that. Royal Morning Blue, thank you very much, thank you very much, and of course, thank you very much. I can't wait to, can't wait to join membership. Yeah, I guess I could do membership, but oh God, I already do so, I already do so much. Let's go ahead and take a look at the participants in the chat. Wow, scared myself. I want to thank 4UP. I didn't make you a mod yet. I need to. You've been around all day today. Cable Guy. Thanks for being around. Daryl Zernick, Digger Dog, Jimmy McKillop, Cell Phone Cinema, uh, Jimmy Jenkins, John Music, Jonathan. Thanks for sticking out all night tonight, bud. Just Phil, Royal Morning Blue, Sapphire, Elf, Syrup, The Observer, Tommy Misses, Nikki X1, Yellow Tommy Tanker, also known as Andy. I want to thank all you guys for coming out here tonight. Holy cow. No, I don't have Instagram. I do, but that's from uh, a past life. Nothing current. Uh, Daryl Zernick, Yellow Tommy Tanker, also known as uh, is there. But I want to also, what the hell am I doing here? I want to thank the guys in the back. I want to thank our panel who came on. Uh, w. Decker, thanks for everything you said tonight. Great conversation on Aerial School. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for uh, bringing it up. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Let's uh, turn next to, I think, a Swan left already, it looks like. Um... Let's run in. And, uh, Andy W. Andy, Yellow Tommy Tanker, yeah. also known as Andy. Yeah, thanks, Tom. That's been a been a really good show as well. You know, it's um, really early in the morning here. It's been brilliant to stay up and uh, touch base and everything. Yeah, really good. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, Greg O'Brien, thanks for coming in tonight, bud. Again, man, thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm um, just glad to be a part of this. And um like I said, I learned so much from uh, every time I, I listen oh, yeah. to these guys. And you know, and, and I you, could everybody. have kept this conversation going for another hour, but I just need to have some time for my family here. <laughs> the time oh. I got left with cupcakes. So thanks for coming out here Good. tonight. Absolutely, bro uh, brother. Thank you, Thomas. Hey, I appreciate right. you, man. Absolutely, <laughs> Crypto you. Mike. Actually, you know, LM uh, Crypto Mike was next. I think. Thanks for coming in, Mike. I appreciate you being here. Oh, my pleasure, Thomas. I I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Absolutely. You had a great time going over Doc, and we could go on for hours, but you know what? Let's save it for the next day. Uh, thank you for coming out. And more importantly, last person in, first, uh, last per well, last person out, LM. Thank you for uh, for stopping in and having a small comment and have, having something to say. No, it's great. Yes. I, I really like just listening to everybody. Good show this evening. Thank you so much. Yep. I think we're going live tomorrow. Special day. It's my day that I don't have to go into the office. <laughs> Let's keep it there. Absolutely, Syrup. On that note, uh, we've said to the panel, but more importantly, I can't forget the man of the hour, Gary. Are you still with us, Gary? Yeah. Uh, Hello. Yeah. You're still awake. Yeah. yeah. With Andy. Absolutely. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> I want to say thank you for being here today. Absolutely. appreciate you being here, my friend. Oh. Uh, you're welcome. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Will you stop? Excuse me. Uh, this is this is assault in the workplace. Um, this is harassment. Oh, does, <laughs> excuse me. Does Gary's union need to intervene? Oh yes, they do because I was just I was just groped. Uh, this is more groping. This is more of eroded? a waking you up. I'm trying to shake you to wake Gro you up, Gary. That not what you, those are pillows. <laughs> <laughs> and absolutely, and as we usually say at the end of every broadcast, eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Go and back go to away. Part of the city where you belong. Absolutely, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Good night, everybody. We'll see you soon. Take care, yeah, everyone. Love you.